uh, Logan in Dallas. Do you think Texas will struggle more now that they're going from the mediocre Big 12 to the SEC? Logan, for starters, how dare you say the Big 12 is mediocre? It's not mediocre. It's the best conference in college football. Not in terms of win-losses, program status, all that. No, but just in terms of what we fell in love with with the sport, why we actually care about this conference. Yeah, it's number one. Hands down, number one. But Texas going to the SEC... The way that I view the SEC this year is like the voice. Stay with me for a second. You know, like how on the show they have the chairs and everyone starts singing and then they really like it. They turn around, it's the big red and they flip it. Oh, it's Blake, it's it's Blake Shelton. It's Reba. It's it's Chance the Rapper. Well, well, there's four chairs that you're turning around this year in the SEC for sure. Number one is going to be Georgia. Number two is going to be Alabama until proven otherwise. Number three, I feel like for most people is Ole Miss. And then there's the turn. It's Texas. I don't think Texas is going to struggle at all. And the reason why isn't because of, yeah, you do lose some players like Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell, and you lose some defensive names like Devontae Sweat and Jalen Ford. It's because of that offensive line. If you listen to any interview with Steve Sarkeesian, and there's one that's going to be out there, I don't like giving other YouTube content creators a lot of pace during my segments, but Josh Pate did an incredible interview with Steve Sarkeesian. And he talks about how a few years ago, that offensive line couldn't perform at the spring game. So they ran spring drills for fans to see everything because of they didn't want to hurt their quarterbacks because they didn't have the right offensive linemen. Well, now they have like 17, 18 guys, including a few walk-ons that have drastically improved overnight and turned into legit starters. They would be starters anywhere in the Big 12, anywhere in the ACC, some Big 10 schools, even a place like Vanderbilt, maybe Arkansas, you could throw in a Kentucky. The walk-ons would be able to go get a scholarship at a group of five school and they would be a starter week one. That's why Texas is so good. They're grabbing that red chair and saying, hi, Auburn, Missouri, Kentucky, Florida. Good to see you guys. Get out. Get out of that chair. That belongs to me. I'm going to plant my chair down right here. And when I start to realize the college football playoff is sitting behind closed doors, I'm going to turn my chair around and it's going to be me standing on the other side saying, hook them. They're that good. They have that much talent. And when you have an offensive line that's returning three starters full-time, two guys that have experience in multiple roles and also great challenges of depth in the trenches, you're really well put together. I, I do think Quinn Ewers has got to step up. I do not know what I'm going to see from these wide receivers. And yeah, you do have some questions with the defensive line, losing Sweat and losing Murphy. But still, do you really have questions about what the future looks like in Texas with Sark if he's recruiting at this level? And whether or not you agree with what's going on with NIL, that's not the point. The point is, is that Texas has the resources, they have the funds, they have the boosting, the backing, the support. They're going to be a household name and a household figure for the long term in the future when it comes to what is the SEC. Don't look now, but there's been a conversation I've had with some people saying, well, what would happen if Georgia just stays at number two? It's probably because of either Alabama just woke up and found a way to buy everything or Texas came as advertised to the SEC. And there is a scenario where in year one, Texas walks away as the SEC champions. And now Georgia, that's been sitting and hopefully moving out of that silver medal spot, is just going to have to still be the maid of honor and not the actual bride on Saturdays. Next, Hey, you made it to the end of the video. That's awesome. Thank you so much. But before you leave, make sure that you hit subscribe. And if you want to check out any of our other great work, make sure you click on one of the videos here. Am I pointing at the right spot? I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm really not.